Hello, it's Fast Charlie. I've got a, a pretty cool lock here. It is uh, an Illinois Chicago Duo mortise cylinder, and it is a triple bitted key. It's got it is a wafer lock. It's got the double sided wafer lock key right here, but it also has what's called triple bitted. This is the reason it's called triple bitted. It, it has bidding right here as well and that is because there are side wafers and this key only goes in it doesn't go in this way it only goes in this way and this is a lock that I've been looking for for quite a while ever since I found out that they exist I have picked you know the uh, I and I am familiar with the padlock version of this which is right here and I love these locks I think they're a lot of fun but when I found out that they have them in a mortise cylinder I thought I need to get one of those so I found one and actually found two and this one they came as a pair and cool thing is they came with two sets of keys and they are keyed the same which comes in really handy when you try to take one apart because there are a lot of parts in here and it can be very confusing when trying to dissect, dissect it. Uh, I'm going to try to get in here and then I want to try to show the insides. I There's no way that I can uh, comfortably completely disassemble it but I will take it apart as much as I'm comfortable just to show you kind of how it works the first thing you do here is to try to set the side wafers and I just I'm just using a bottom of keyway tensioner it's a wiper insert it's pretty thick it's from southern specialties and a Peterson hook in 25 thousands and what I'm looking for is a false set. I'm going to start in the back. I'm looking for a false set on those side wafers. There's a little bit of a false set, but I do need to make sure that it's as deep as possible and it felt like I just set another one. I do not want to start picking the top and bottom wafers unless I am in a really good false set. If I start going after the bottom and top wafers before I'm in that, uh, it can cause problems with an overset. What I want to feel now is counter rotation, and I just felt a little bit of counter rotation. And that will tell me that I probably have those side wafers picked and set. And I am feeling some, so I hope that that it's set. I'm just going to work on the bottom here until I feel that I have about everything set, that I can set, and then go to the top. And it is easy to miss the very front top wafer because it likes to hide behind the tensioner. I'm going to check the very front here. There have been times where I've been picking a duo and I needed to switch to the bottom of the keyway to, in order to make sure that I have access to the, the top wafer, the top front wafer, I should say. I feel like I'm getting close, but not quite. Okay. 
give me a little bit of trouble here. They are kind of difficult to pick at first. Once you figure out the order that you need to attack it, it's not that bad. It's not that tough of a pick. Again, I do need to make sure that I have that very front one set. I just dropped some. Just heard springiness and some clicking. So I need to go back down to the bottom and see what I can do. I am going to check with these side wafers now. Just make sure that there's nothing that I missed because I would have expected it to have opened by now. There we go. That I did miss one. It appears. Now we should be home free. There we go. It's that took a bit longer than I would have preferred, but got it open. And like I said, they can be a little tricky at times, especially if you think that you have set all of those side wafers and uh, you try to pick the top and bottom before it is actually ready. So I think that's what happened in this situation. trip me up a little bit but once I was in a very clear a very clear false set from the bottom left wafers everything went pretty well I shouldn't really need this but just to be sure and the first time that I ever took one of these apart that terrified me <laughs> this falling out it's just a little piece of curved brass and at first I thought it was uh, drill protection but you know when I saw it was brass I knew it was not I figured out that it goes right here and it's really cool what it does um, I did right on this so that I wouldn't mess up and I tried to color code that code some of these wafers let me take this out and put the key back in make sure that that is correct 
All right. So, what this little piece of brass does is, at, at least from what I can tell, I, I actually just kind of am guessing here, but normally when you put this in and you unlock it, you could you can spin it all the way around, um, but you can't take the key out when it is at 180 degrees. However, if you remove this little brass piece, like a half moon brass piece, it opens this up fully, and this piece no longer blocks the front, the very front wafer. So that will, it, so it would be oriented this way if it was turned 180 degrees and now without it you can remove the key. So let me show that real quick again. And now at 180 degrees, if I get it lined up, it can be uh, the key can be removed when it's in the unlocked position. Or I suppose if if you have a mechanism that locks it at 180 degrees, it would work there as well. So I think that's pretty cool. It's a pretty neat little, really simple design. Oops. Let me make sure I have this in. Correctly. And I, I just think that's such a simple way of dealing with that. Now, this lock, the key does say the Illinois Lock Company, USA, and it does say Wheeling, Illinois. Uh, however, I, I have not located anything on the mortise cylinder the, um, on the lock itself that says Illinois Lock Company but everything appears to be proper here I'm gonna try to show this these wafers so and some of this I am just I am simply assuming and guessing but so we'll go ahead and count these. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen wafers. And like I said, there is, I, I, I could not feel comfortable trying to fully disassemble this thing. I can, you know, what I'm comfortable doing is showing, lifting these wafers up just a bit to show that the springs are here and that they all move. Also, I can I I can take out uh, the back pair, I believe, without too much trouble. But they are designed sort of like in pairs, basically. But from what I can tell, these wafers here that go in these slots. I believe these are the side wafers. That's my belief. I don't know for sure. They're a little bit they seem to be a little bit wider than the others. They seem to be. It's kind of hard to tell. I have not taken those out. But let's put this in. I made this just because it's a little bit easier to control than dealing with the them trying to get the key in uh, and out. But I'll just try to bring it back so that I can 
raise these and then you do not ever want to lose these springs this this spring there's a spring in here that is shared between these back two wafers and I'm gonna try my best to show it without losing the spring so So these springs are very difficult to find if you lose them. They are very, very tiny. I mean, this is, it's not as small as a, a sidebar wafer, like on a Medico, but it is very, very tiny. But what these do, I want to make sure I keep these oriented properly, but they, at rest, normally sit like this with this with the spring between these two it's basically a shared spring and that allows it to do something like this or like this I'm, I'm not sure which way it goes but these little notches here I believe this is what causes the false sets and the counter rotation like this one this one's on the bottom and then these are on the top and it's very very interesting how these work but this is the notch I believe this is the notch for the key the full length of the key and then this little piece right here is the actual cut is my understanding so here's that one, and this one. I'm going to do my best to get this back in here, and not mess up. <clears throat> As I said, it's really difficult, and it can be real tricky to these springs back in. I'm going to use a pick to try to line these, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, but sp maybe spring. Uh, I'm not sure what you'd call them, but like those spring um, mm, catch or spring retention portion and this is really important here I do not want to lose that spring so that has to go down there now it should work I need to pull that out and make sure that the key works accurately but I also want to make sure that that's yep it's springy There we go. It does work. Should be good to go. And there you have it. It's a very, very cool uh, lock. And thought I would share. All right. Well, thank you for watching. And uh, as always, everybody. Oh, uh oh. I did something wrong here. I'm going to have to probably. Yeah, I did something wrong. Just a second. Sometimes things like that happen, so. There we go. All right. Everybody, be good and be well.